Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Super License F1 podcast. My name's Rodney. My name's Zach. Great to be talking to you again, Zach, at the arranged time. We've gotten together over the internet, you in London town, me in Melbourne town, to talk about this glorious sport of Formula One, and isn't it really having a moment right now? Oh, yeah, it's just having, it's like a big deep breath, really. It's, you know, the, maybe uh, the calm so? before the storm, I'm hoping. Just <laughs> big... Yeah, and then it's just going to blow out the biggest F1 season at some point in the near future, <laughs> maybe. It's the longest Probably quiet not. before any storm that I've ever heard of. Yeah, at this point you start looking outside and you go, the storm maybe, did it miss us? Is it gone? <laughs> Was it wrong? The sky is particularly blue. <laughs> Hmm. Well, yeah, that's why I don't trust barometers. I trust F1 podcasters to get my news. And if you've been waiting on us to let you know about when the F1 season is coming back, the bad news is that there's sort of no good news, as in there's no reliable newsworthy news. It's all a little bit uh, up in the air still, as you would expect. So rather than, you know, rather than give you the laundry list of things that are being suggested and rejected or on hold or paused or or uh, blocked. Uh, we're just going to let things lie for now, but we will be back with updates as soon as there's anything to report, we assure you, won't we? Yeah, 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 exactly. As soon as there's anything that we can really actively say like, yes, this is, look, there's been an announcement and they're going to hold the French Grand Prix on these dates and it's going to be a reduced two days and they're going to test everybody with F1 grade thermometers that can take someone's temperature from 150 yards, <laughs> then we'll report that. Um because, you know, we're F1 reporting journalists, professionals. Mm. You know, that's us. That's why you come to this show. The facts, the hard facts. No conjecture, <laughs> no funny stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, actually, in truth, we're trying to do the fun more, you know, keep you entertained stuff because F1's just, yeah, genuinely having a big deep breath right now and they don't know what's going on because they can't do anything because all of the countries where they would take F1 are all working out what they're going to do too. So hopefully we're back soon. Um, but, yeah. Whilst the sport is holding its breath, you shan't. Yes, very well said. And that brings us to the topic of what are we doing here? What are we actually going to do? Well, like we did last time, we're going to record a commentary track for the Netflix series Drive to Survive, which focuses conveniently all about F1. And that happens to be what we know all about. Um, to get a lot of positive feedback about the first episode that we did about like this. So thank you very much. The idea is you're listening to this now. You can start getting... Netflix logged in. You can get things queued up. We're going to be doing season two, episode two. Thanks to those people who got in touch with us last time too and said, uh, listen to the show, but uh, I wasn't watching the, sh the, the, the series. I didn't watch the TV show. I don't have Netflix or whatever. I just listen to you guys. And that was a bit interesting. I am a, I imagine it was completely uh, bewildering because <laughs> the whole idea is you sort of <laughs> like our normal watch, shows. watch and listen. Well, yeah, even more so than our usual shows. Um, but that's the idea. We're going to tell you when to hit play. And then you sync it up with us. It doesn't need to be to the second, but it's near enough is good enough. But the closer you in sync with us, you are the better. That's just in life in general. The better, the closer in sync you are with our lives, the better yours will be, I'm sure. So, Zachary, you have lined us up. I'm going to hand it over mm. to you. I'm going to hand you over to you the reins. You're going to give us a countdown whenever you are ready, my friend. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one. Dun dun, we're in. I was thinking we should have probably just called this dun dun. They're <laughs> <laughs> so fucking around. We're dun -dun. straight in with the Haas guys. They're all chill. They're so fun. Dude, 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 dude. What's going on, dude? What? No, no, I'm saying that that's what Haas say. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> I'm oh. sorry. Oh, Ooh. gee, I thought you were an American for a second there. Whew. Oh, gee. Oh, do you reckon back. when you, when you apply for a job at Haas, do you reckon you have to write on the cover letter, "Hey, dude"? Uh, yeah. Or maybe actually everybody's first name is changed by default uh, by legal rules yes. to be "dude." Very dude Gunter Steiner. Dude, dude Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> so this is basically just setting up. Yeah, we're not usually that good. We sort of did a bit okay last year. It could have been better, but this year it's going to be much better. I was thinking about this going in because this is, this episode focuses more on Haas, and I was thinking going into this that um, over the course of a season, yeah, that the underdog teams might have a few good moments, but you're never really with this sport going to get that like, yeah, we were last last year, and then this year, boom, second, or you know, we're midfield, and then boom, we won the championship. That's just not really how Formula One works. So I don't know if the producers are like waiting for a season like that, but it's not really going to happen. 
Yeah, especially with the, we're so late in the formula, right? Like the things are mm. so well developed. It's it's kind of inching things forward, not massive jumps. Yeah, um, true. All I can think whenever they show Grosjean and Magnussen together Magnuson? in a shot. Yeah, Magnussen and Grosjean, they look so awkward. <laughs> yeah, them, they're like, they're definitely oh, they're picking the points go. where they're shooting daggers at each other to kind of ramp up the tension. This one's called yeah. boiling point. Oh, Oof. Really? Can you see your hat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's me, top of the shard. Oh, wow, well, hi. Yep, yeah. <laughs> that's where I, I, I park my car around there. Right really? Is that you? Yeah, yeah, that's... Well, I look a little bit like that through isolation. <laughs> my hair's graying. Oh, jeez, yeah. I've got good. an isolation beard as well. What time is it in the morning? It's so not busy. He looks it's not like awake. Really he hasn't had coffee yet. Yeah, that's kind of that pre-dawn kind of dusty look to the place. Mm, yeah. Uh, oh, now God, we're in a... I forgot about this. Yes, here it is. William Story, CEO of Rich Energy. But he's right in here at the start of episode two. I remember one of the criticisms I saw online of this was, oh, they didn't really touch on that William Story stuff. I'm like, are you kidding? He was like, he he appears in like three episodes or something. Yeah. Yeah. He says Haas is a little bit rock and roll and they're taking on, (laughs) they're taking on the F1, like they're there to change it. It was like, no, if anything, they've gotten better when they've become more F1 and less Mm. like insane. (laughs) If you told me, though, that there was some mogul who was just an, made out of money, just had this genius idea for a, for a drink that he's launching, I, and I would expect him to look like that guy, you know? Yeah, especially, I suppose, because he's English as well. Like, he's going to, like, the full... That's an insane look for an English per- for an Englishman. But I feel like if he was, mm. like, American or something, he would be super suave, like, massive gold yeah. watch, like, really so, yeah. nicely fitting suit, not, like, in a leather jacket. Like, I'm a rock star of drinks, which is a funny position for rich energy, right? Because um, Red Bull is already that kind of thing anyway. Like, that's the exact same brand positioning as Red Bull. Like, look, mm. we're extreme. It's like, what well, is rich energy more extreme? <laughs> <laughs> They're for, they're for rich people who, um, they're for, for, yeah, extreme people who are also rich. That's who they're targeting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Rich this people so who weird. want to pretend to be extreme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, is his hair really long as well? Yeah, that's right. He's got oh, yeah, like a big yeah, yeah. bushy ponytail. He looks like a biker. A, a I don't even biker. remember this launch. Do you remember this launch? Um, I wasn't really paying attention to this launch, no. Doubted. Doubted. Here we go. He's just so bewildered. (laughs) Yeah, but Will's here to explain. Yeah. Here we go. Yes, they did that. Yeah, I mean, that's a real rock star move, right? Basically buy a Ferrari. (laughs) That's what it. you do. The, the, he, they basically did the least amount of homework <laughs> that they could get away with. So, yeah, I mean, that is kind of a rock star thing to do. It's a bad boy yeah. thing to do. Yeah. we Basically, we wanted to be a new rock star band, so we took all of the Rolling Stones <laughs> songs and slightly changed the lyrics and a couple so of the true. notes and gave our band a different name, a, a, a darker name, um, a harder name. And That's such yeah. a good way so to be famous in 2020 totally and have a shelf life of about six months, which, hey, yeah. ironically, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one could get rich energy drinks, or else no one actually knew the shelf life. <laughs> yeah. I, do I mean, like they proved us wrong. Though. Look at that, Wait, that uh, kind of the purpley jacket. Like velvet? I like his jacket. Yeah. yeah, I think it was velvet. Drape yourself okay. in velvet, mate. I just feel worried about that. Like, I want to be able to lean against the wall in comfort without worrying about my clothes getting damaged, you know? Ah. Anyway, we're in Melbourne. This is high octane stuff. This is where we're going to relive the painful, painful memories that Haas have endured year after year. No, didn't they do okay that year? Magnuson did okay, um, yeah, but right? Grosjean had a uh, pit stop problem. Ah, look. See, this it's is still what I mean about smiles. the chronology. Now it's like we're going to quickly move through the season and see how they do. I'm going to move forward. Uh, oh, God, I miss Racing Rod. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, so tense. <laughs> ah, this sparks. Oh, this is oh, one of those oh. down the ladder type. Uh, here we mm. go. What could go wrong here? Uh, quite a lot goes wrong here. 
But we're going to see them uh, slip down the ladder quite a bit, I think. Yes. And look, uh, the looks of consternation from everyone. Uh, Won't be in Montreal this year. But, mm, oh, I remember ouch. that. He just spun for no reason. <laughs> well, he clipped the wall, right? <laughs> yeah, he got close to the wall and then it was just... Oh, yeah. Worried and then wasn't Grosjean it. out immediately after that? Um, I could believe it. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> oh, no, that comes was the Grosjean. Proof. Ah, <laughs> oh, geez, really? Is that right? In in any race car ever, like he's probably driven some real shit down the years, right? He's been racing for a long time. When they say that, like F one cars must just be when they're bad, they must be absolutely horrendous mm. to drive. Like so bumpy so. and horrible and oh highs man. and lows. Highs and lows. So straight away, this is the start of episode two. We're already in Austria. Like this there's so much jumping around this season. Austria is a caricature of itself. It looks so Austrian. <laughs> like, every landscape shot you see of Austria, it's like, oh, yeah, that's Austria. Definitely. It's definitely 100%. Austria. <laughs> it looks like Spa to me. I can't really tell the difference. Oh, Except the Spa has three mountainous. times as many corners. Mm. And This music is heavy, man. I really like... Um, Haas's, their, their, like, overlapping tile, like, Form, um, set up for their offices or their mobile homes and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like how they kind what of scales, like they like overlap. The glass the glass out the front like overlaps on their buildings. It looks really cool. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, there's got to be something to admire about them. Mm. Well, they remember from episode one, they look like they just work out of a garage in the US somewhere. Mm, that's true. This is uh, one of his trademark Pep's talks. I mean, people talk about, like, carrot and stick, but I just feel like with Gunter Steiner, even if there was a carrot, he would probably still just hit you with it. Yeah. <laughs> he painted a stick orange and smacks you with it. Yeah. They don't look happy. They don't look like a happy no. bunch. There's just no energy about them. There's certainly no, no rich energy about them. <laughs> He's saying there's some poor energy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the engine starts up. What more could you ask for? Magnuson's auditioning to be the talking head in future series, I reckon. He doesn't... Just- other than in the Haas episodes, the Haas boys don't get a lot of... There's not a lot else going on. Well, I mean, what is there to talk about? Yeah. Like, yeah, we're bad. How are you next week? Uh, we're still bad. Uh, and what about the week after that? Well, you won't know. You won't read about it. We're still bad. This is actually one of my favorite things because we never see this These anywhere else. But yeah. I love the debriefs with the whole team. I love seeing how they run. I love seeing the hierarchy of where drivers fit in at the team. Like, mm. are drivers... Like, if this was a normal company, would they be like managers of their own little groups or would they be like outside consultants that are brought in to advise? Are they like essentially freelancers? Like how do they fit Mm. in to like, do they get to boss anyone around? It kind of seems like they do, but they're always asking permission to boss people around. (laughs) It's really weird. That was a Ferrari, not their car. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's proving his point that there were other faster cars. (laughs) Jeez. Do you reckon this no guy was like... No greater sign that you're not going to talk than if your microphone's okay. not near <laughs> <Yeah>. your mouth. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, do you reckon that guy asked not not to share my name? Like, what's your name? We want to put it in the credits. Like, ah, oh, no, nah, you don't need <laughs> to do that. Nah, don't mention that. <laughs> oh, the basics. I just, you know, it's admirably simple. The car is too slow, slow. on the it track. Is- he literally said that at the beginning. He literally said, they just need more speed. <laughs> they like, need mm-hmm. is a faster car. <laughs> Good. Good. Glad we covered that. <laughs> oh, second debrief. Oh, this is harsh. <laughs> oh, no. I would hate for Gunter Steiner to be my dad. Just, you know, 
Like, he'd be like, Dad, you want to come and play basketball with me? And then you'd miss, and he'd be like, well, why did you fucking throw the ball when you were going to miss? Why didn't you throw it so it would go in the hoop? <laughs> you threw it in the hoop yesterday. What happened today? <laughs> <laughs> Getting fucking worse, you wanker. <laughs> Gene Haas seems okay, though. He comes he across really pretty well. He, he, I mean, he can't be happy, but he's keeping it together, right? No, and he's a problem solver. He runs a really successful company. He seems relatively hands-on. I just don't think he necessarily, like, he doesn't, he doesn't push people. He pushes via, via Gunter, and that's all. Mm. Sort of feels like he's an astute mind. Do you know? But I mean, he does sort of sum it up pretty well. But it's also like you're not even in there. You're not in those meetings. You're not the. Yeah. You don't have the decades of F1 experience. But at the same time, he kind of just walks in and sums it up in a second. Like and a Will Boston. He, <laughs> he lets it be awkward for the appropriate amount of time before breaking the tension a little bit. He does that. Yeah, he he does that incredible thing where he points something out and stops. And he's mm, happy to yeah. let the silence sit there. And I'm so yeah. bad with that. When pe- And I'm <laughs> bad at doing it. I'm bad at being on the receiving end. But when someone's yeah. like, well, that didn't go well. It seemed like it could have gone better. Mm. And it's not really a question as much as it is kind of a statement <laughs> that you need to respond to. And they just yeah. leave the space and you're like, it's like, mm, yep. That's what I'm thinking. And I want to hear what you're thinking, but I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to show all my cards. Yeah. You're essentially asking me to explain and I can't really. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I mean, he also knows, though, like, just walking in and yelling at you and putting everyone down is actually not going to help anything. So it's like, you know, and Gunter already does enough of that. So, yeah. In a way, they're a good team, I suppose. They balance each other off a bit. Well, I actually, I kind of like them as a, as a midfield team in that as long as that funding doesn't look, doesn't look like they're concerned about funding for, like, the second half of a season or for the next season. I think teams, yeah. as long as they know they're going to be around next season, they can kind of operate regularly. Uh, that's half the problem. Like, for F1 teams just fall apart really quickly when things, are, like, there's a little bit of uncertainty, like, in the short term because it kind of mm. builds on itself and it's like a house of cards, although that's a different Netflix show. Um, it all just kind of falls <laughs> down so quickly. Um, so, Like the last season of House of Cards. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, I don't know. I mean, you, I get the feeling from Gene Haas, you don't expect him to be like, wow, why aren't we winning championships? But I just think he doesn't want to be embarrassed week in, week out, you know? No, he does. He obviously doesn't like it when things aren't working properly. He must be looking mm, at me no like, I does. put a lot of money into this, and you guys have shown performance in the past. Like, why is it bad this time? Um, and it must be so weird to know that there's so many things that can be changed with so many staff available to change them with so many resources, and yet... They're at an absolute loss. Like they can't work out anything. And I remember yeah. this from this season where they they yeah. they start to think like, should we just get the package from Melbourne, and like go back to square one, essentially? Like that's it's essentially what they're thinking about doing here, right? Like just hmm. you know that you know, should this be better? Yeah, we're putting in a new gearbox, we're putting in a new engine, <laughs> whatever it is, it should be better. But they just kept coming up with the wrong setup every single time. And that must really piss off someone like Gene Haas, who has built businesses kind of uh, with a lot of detail and a lot of effort. And they do, like, they build machinery as a business. He has some insight into how machines work and are made and developed mm. and kind of pushed out performance. It must be incredibly frustrating for him. I'm pretty sure Gunther Steiner was in a big hurry there to get out of that garage and get over to that sort of, uh, whatever, whatever the, you call that bit. I don't even know what wall. that's called. What's that bit called? Pit wall? The pit wall. Mm, I guess yeah, so. that's the pit wall. <clears throat> okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I think he wanted to get away from Gene and just, you know, get it going. That was probably like 20 minutes before the start of the session. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please leave. Please, please, please. Oh, 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 what, what's, what's that, John? You need me over there? Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah. I'll go over there right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. All right, I'll be over there in a sec. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the part of the show where they, they get our hopes up. They're going to be like, look yes. at the potential. Things are turning oh. around for these guys. Classic hero's journey. Mm. <laughs> Do you know much about the hero's journey? I'm actually the book is sitting on my bedside it? table right now. <laughs> okay, by, cool. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Joseph Campbell, Collected yeah. Works. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know it. The Hero with a Thousand Faces. It's on my bedside table right now. It's the next book. I got yeah. three from my old boss when I last left my last job, and this is the third one. This is <laughs> the one about definitely narrative. Gonna, uh, it's going to bolster the analysis of future commentaries. 
Mm. Mm, look at this. It's like he's returning to the cave. Like, wow. <laughs> I really like Happy, Happy Magnuson, though. Like, he really lights up. I really like that. You know, it's such a shame because I feel like if he had a better, had a been at better teams, Formula One would have benefited from a really happy Magnuson. I, yeah. I, I've really come this around to him. I like that he's a bit, he's a bit like, okay, if I'm going to be the villain, I'm going to be a villain that is least comes across as relatively intelligent, um, and not yeah. always just angry. Um, I, I like him and it's a shame. I think that he's not at a, a better team that could give him a little bit more of a platform. To, mm. to, I don't know, be in our faces more? I don't know. I remember celebrating him when he, you know, started chirping up and everyone was like, oh, he's the bad boy. He's the bad boy of F1. I was like, he's not, not really. He's just a normal guy. Yeah. yeah. But he just, he needs more performance to back up the talk and he's just, I mean, you know, it can't be done. No. So, obviously... This episode, they're making no effort really to be like, yeah, we'll share Haas, but we'll also add another a B story. Like, nah, let's just, uh, no. this is all Haas all the time. No, Haas provides heroes, anti heroes, <laughs> uh, villains, <laughs> <It's all there. laughs> its own crisis. It's basically yeah. the whole, uh, an entire narrative internalized. <laughs> it's, it's a huge struggle. They're their own good and bad guys. Yeah, there doesn't need to be any other teams. They could <laughs> literally just. Yeah. The two of them race on their own. You know when it's you would play a clear. racing game with just you versus one other person? <laughs> yeah. I'd computer, watch that the season. CPU. Pass against itself. <laughs> <laughs> just somehow they clone themselves and make perfect exact replicas of the car. And then they just race. <laughs> and somehow they still all hit each other. Things are looking shaky, but they're holding it together, Zach. Barely. I mean, barely. barely. Yeah. But they they're look doing good it. With their helmets, though, in the house team. Do you reckon it must be hot in all that helmets. black? Yeah. Uh, it's just getting overtaken everywhere, Rod. Yeah. And who is that? Perez? If it's Stroll, you'd be like, God, <laughs> Stroll. Oh, oh, no. I would probably jump on the radio then. <laughs> yeah. It's well, it's exactly shit. as Will Buxton said they need more speed. Oh, man. Why don't they just listen to him? Oh, turn up the speed button. Is, <laughs> is Magnuson putting his foot all the way to the floor, right? Here Has he got four to the floor? Mm, went past him like he was standing still. And that's not a fast uh, car. That might have even been Hulkenberg. Ugh. Just so slow on the straight, slow in the corners. The only oh, thing they're fast at is being slow. That's troll. Yeah, we just settled that. Yeah, the funny thing is, though, I, I if you pick that statement apart, it actually makes a lot of sense. It's like, it's okay to overheat if you're going really fast, and then it's like, okay, yes. we have to slow down to cool. It's like, if you're hot, but also you're slow, and- that's the two bad things. <laughs> <laughs> no, Grosjean. No, it's not just things right Is it just me like all. normal, or is it the car as well? <laughs> Yeah, it feels like I've damaged the entire front of the car. It's like, is there even a front of the car there? Like, nah, it's the car's perfectly normal. It must just be it's, sickening to know that yeah, you've turned oh, up on that. race day after good qualifying and just be like, wow, we're just really slow. And I've got to sit here for two hours, watch us be really slow. They're just, I mean, they're all in this together. All, all they can do is sh- cry on each other's shoulders. Mr. Nick, Nick Tattoo there, he's not happy. Would you be the kind of driver that who would prefer to retire to save the parts on the car if you know the race isn't going well? But why would save you be the parts of the car? The, the, the parts of the car is what's wrong with the car. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, it's a bit hot, is it? Well, that's too bad. Right, I'm just going to push it as hard as I can. Just some problem with having, you know, 20 ish drivers on the field and having your number be 20. Like, that's just a bad omen. Mm. It's like when Adrian Sertel used to have number 13. And it's like, ah, oh, dude, there's a reason why. There's a reason why that used to not be a thing. <laughs> it's not him, it's the car. I mean, having this guy sitting in the garage playing this sad piano music isn't helping either. Over the radio to them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's unnecessary. Yeah, why not some Flutter Valkyries? Why this depressing shit? 
Go on, name some other upbeat overtures. Uh, Four Seasons Winter. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's the that's the intro to another Netflix show, Chef's Table. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Vivaldi's Four Seasons, Winter. Well, these guys may as well uh, be watching G that. G minor, I want to say. You could say anything, and I, I wouldn't know. You could be like, ah, oh. oh, yes. Ah, oh, yeah. a frolic through the Black Forest. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Is it? Sounds right. Uh, 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 what would that be in German, Rod? Uh, uh, what's a frolic? Uh, uh, frolic. In the Schwarzwald. Schwarz. In the Schwarzwald. Schwarz Forest. It's Schwarzwald, Rod. Come on. Okay. Well, I'm just being, I'm just being silly. I actually do that. You're being obtuse. <laughs> That's not like me. It's Adam Cooper there, trying to get an exclusive. Singing. Yeah. It went bad, right? It did. <laughs> Go on, swear. Please, dare to swear. You're on the Netflix Breaking. Show. Haas had a bad race. <laughs> oh, it looks like Red Bull might have won, or at least done well. Uh, well, we'll st- I've forgotten the guy's name. Yeah? Will Story, he'll be happy. Seeing Red Bull mm. celebrating like that. You reckon? Happy birthday, yes. Roman Grosjean. We have the same birthday. It was a few days oh, ago yeah. as we record this. Wait a same second. initials, same and birthday. the same initials. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. And between us, we have ten F one podiums. Can you believe it? Between us ten. <laughs> That's incredible. Double digits, baby. <laughs> Uh, you know that Roman Grosjean's going to be a team principal at some point, right? He's oh, got no. that. <laughs> he is. He's going to be Renault team principal at, in 15 uh, years. Get him some personality lessons. <laughs> personality lessons. He Who would be the some... teacher for personality lessons, Rod? Well, Will Buxton, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> He's my whipping boy, and I, will, I won't apologize. Mr. Will, explain it like I'm five, Buxton. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's so nice. Copenhagen, fucking It looks beautiful. Jesus. Off to his little summer house. I guess he's living in quite a nice part of it, yeah. (laughs) Go for a little sail. And then they always have to ask the mates to ask him questions for the show. It's like, all right, can you ask him some F1 questions, please? Mm. (laughs) I'm just his friend. We don't talk about F1. Yeah, mostly what I know about Formula One drivers is away from the track, and he's about as far away from the track as he gets out here. But uh, they don't want to talk about Formula One. They're like, let's talk about whatever else. Let's talk about this Jesper Joseph Carlson. Campbell book I'm reading. Who is Jesper Carlson? Should I Google Jesper Carlson? Yeah, you should. Is he? Do you, do you want to make a bet that he is what? Trainer. Mm, it just said friend, though. Stand-up comedian. <laughs> he must be Danish, right? So, Danish long track speed skating, full-time oh, juggler, part-time superhero. This is all from his Twitter <laughs> handle. So, it could be false. Wait, he only has 311 followers? This could be him. That, is this him? I'm just going to make well, a super picture. license is yeah, about to follow like him. him. It's about to be yeah. 312. Yeah, El Capitan of the Danish long track speed skating. I mean, he's I'm surprised it doesn't say... He has 300 you know, followers. I'm amazed it doesn't say, as seen on Drive to Survive. <laughs> is he on the IMDb? <laughs> That's quite pretty. Big question, Rod. Is that Spa or Silverstone? Oh, Silverstone. Yeah, it might be Italy. <laughs> <gasps> Have you been there? No, but I love this. I, I've been very close to there. I've driven through this area. It's the weirdest part of Europe in my mind because it is, is it Italy. Weird? Because it's Italy, it looks like mm-hmm. Switzerland, and they all speak German. Like oh. German is the preferred language. That's why he lives there. It is there. pretty like, weird. It's, he's Austrian, but this is his, like essentially his mm. hometown. Do you like seeing uh, Formula One team personnel's families? I kind of do. Especially because Gunter, I don't imagine him like this. I imagine Wearing being shorts. more of a dork. But here he is in yeah. like nice linen shirt with the like cool like, like chino shorts. Yeah. I mean, he's wearing Birkenstocks. He might be. And their place looks this really like. nice. My preferred tap type. <laughs> Yep, water. <laughs> no, it's got to have a little screen so that the water doesn't, like, splash everywhere. And it also needs yeah. to be directly over the centre of the basin. Ah, in the centre. I'm, like, hitting my hands on the basin when I'm washing them. I need hmm. water going down the middle. Look at that. It's perfect. Well, I like that we're learning stuff kitchen. about each other. I don't really like the bevel on those tiles. It's a bit extreme. 
Mm. And I don't like them lined up like that. I like the brick. (laughs) Uh, Not gas either. It's induction. No. Uh, Look, I can't be angry at that. That's what I've got. Look, he even helps out at home. He's not above helping. But we can practice our German. This is for the cameras, or nah, too fast for me. Oh wait, there's words I can read them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> don't need to translate, <laughs> mate. The hard work has been done. Everybody, his wife does look especially concerned, and I mean. He he does consistently just feel kind of like a broken man. What is that mm. art? Why is that him with, like, nuts that's, in his head? That's, that's a self-portrait that he whipped up. <laughs> oh, that's He took those parts out of the car, though. That's the problem. Are they drinking water out of a vase? Is that a vase? <laughs> it's, a, it's an artisanal jug rod. You reckon? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. You're making some pretty big calls. <laughs> I like the use of Google Earth as well. I'm glad that someone uh, paid the subscription to get Google Earth. Oh, Daniel Craig. Controversial opinion. We could do a whole podcast on this. About what? My controversial opinion, which isn't that controversial. I think he's the worst one. Rich Energy, they're done. It's all over, man. Yes. I remember where I was when I heard this news. Where were you? I was in Bulgaria. <laughs> I thought you meant like I was at the gym or <laughs> No, I was I was climbing the seven lakes in Bulgaria. I remember uh when Sebastian Vettel announced he was leaving Red Bull to go to Ferrari, I remember I checked Twitter. I, I was in my car driving to Albert Park, took my bike out there, got checked Twitter before we started, no, no updates. Did did a couple of laps of Albert Park, got back into my car, and you had messaged me going absolute ape shit, going, <laughs> the biggest news is broken, this is incredible. <laughs> I remember where I was when that news broke. It wasn't Bulgaria, it was still Melbourne, but, you know, memorable. So, interestingly, where we were just before in Merin, in northern mm. Italy, very close to the Alps, that, I was basically right around there, because the, um, uh, the Stelvio Pass, which is a famous bit of road, uh, between Austria and Italy is just there. And I was driving up there in 2014 and I'd stayed up there at a restoration hotel when the news broke that Danny Ricardo had gotten the drive mm. uh, in Red Bull. I remember because mm. I was discussing it in this empty pool with my friend Phil, a uh, fan of the oh, show, right. a good friend of the show. <laughs> yes. um, and we were just talking about like, how good would it be? And then we got out and then he'd go, he got the drive. And it happened. So yeah. I remember too, though, because Mark Webber very, very heavily hinted that it was going to happen. So it was like, yeah. oh, it's all confirmed. <laughs> yeah, I remember it coming out that Daniel had like bought his house in Monaco like a week beforehand. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we You're all like, went oh, out and was like, okay, this is happening. <laughs> he, he's, he means business. Look at that expression. I mean, the whole rich energy thing is just so insane, right? That they, that, what's his face? The CEO of Rich Energy got hold of the, ran the Twitter feed, but that wasn't actually mm, yeah. how rich energy was running it and they were kind of fighting for the ownership of that, of the social media channels and like the, the official channels that word was coming out. Like he's like, we've canceled the sponsorship and actually the rich energy like owners were like, mm, not really, not right away. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as bonkers as uh, the house situation itself. It's got those charts, complicated charts. There's lines going up, lines going down. Can't be good. Yeah. It's going to happen. They're going to roll the dice. They're going to actually revert one car back to the way it was at the start of the year. See if they can unfuck the fucked up situation they got themselves into. Oh, what a story. How do you decide? And, and would you want the old one? I suppose you would know that it's good. I mean, I think at that point, you're just like, whatever the different thing is, that's the thing I want. Because I want yeah. not this. <laughs> yeah. I would probably stop listening to that guy if I to, like to be honest. A yow. He doesn't. He doesn't seem like he has good ideas. Hmm. That's a great <coughs> accent. It's my favorite. He does have a future as like a like a language teacher or public speaker, maybe. 
I mean, he definitely he definitely speaks English, German, Italian. It wouldn't surprise me if he spoke French as well. Yeah, he probably does. But he would be a good like um like a like a consultant come out and help people work on like uh, team building and all that kind of stuff and be yeah. like look when you when you're addressing a bunch of people what you want to do is single one of them out absolutely humiliate them devastate <laughs> them crush their personality and then uh, to pat everyone on the back and say uh, let's just keep trying yeah <laughs> so and then make a joke you get about the them. most out of your team yeah, yeah. basically humiliate them into just doing say, better I'm joking I'm joking I'm kidding but do better off are you. <laughs> So with those talking heads, always kind of looks before. like he's like kind of puffing at his chest and his chin, up, like <laughs> always kind of leaning into the answer. Like, well, I thought it was great. Like, just kind of like pushing out. Look at look at that shot. There's a huge grid of lights. There's like probably fifty light globes there, and yet they're still half dark. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very strange lighting decision. Well, it makes it gritty, right? This is Netflix. It's serious. Oh, it's a dark side and a light side. This is like Christopher the, Nolan. The cars are working right now. That's fine. They're running. They're going in the right direction. Oh, down the middle of the track. That doesn't look right. No. (laughs) What's going on there? Stop there. No, I think it's just the camera angle is weird. Super weird. At least we're going to get some answers now, Zach. One of them's in the new car. One of them's in the old car. We're finally going to find out what's going to happen. This is going to be... I've got a good feeling about the end of this episode. Things are going to go well. I Every time they do this, I'd be, I, would, I know that if I was an F1 driver, I would struggle to land the car on the line every single time. <laughs> it gives me... I always... Whenever they do the in-car shot, I'm always like, oh, God, they're going to fuck it up. They're going mm. too quick. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> hey, we know her now because we saw her in the previous scene. Ah... Continuity. Yes, I'm, I'm getting invested in these people's lives. I don't know Lyft sponsored McLaren. Huh. Just gets buried amongst all the other sponsors. Here we go. We're going to get some action. Boom. It's a good start. If you're judging I by mean, Magnuson, in fr- uh, by Grosjean mm, in front yeah. of him. If you think about it, most of the drivers get a good start. Don't touch. Don't touch each other. Why do they always end up so close together, Rod? <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. They know what they're doing. There's too much on the line for anything to go wrong here. Mm. Classic lockup by Grosjean. This is fine. This is fine. Oh, I'm getting worried. Uh, I'm getting worried, Zach. <gasps> no closer, like please, boys. The cars are exactly the same, even though they've changed everything about it. <laughs> They're still a bit shit. Oh, for God's sake, guys. Please don't do that again. What happened? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, we know. We were there. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> so true. That's that guy's uh, answering machine message now, I'm sure. <laughs> I just love that they're both to blame every single time and they're both <laughs> so angry at each other. <laughs> both cars have punctures. <laughs> oh, boy. The sad thing is, Haas, as soon as they change one of these drivers, they're going to look back and be like, we should have done that three years ago. Like, they, they never should have both been in the same team. Well. Mm. Get Scott Speed in one of these cars. Uh, yeah, what's your basis on wanting him back? He's American, and he's oh, got yeah, speed in his name. It works <laughs> yeah. for, for Max Power or whatever the Australian guy's name is. What's the guy's <laughs> the Australian indie car racer called? Like he's won everything. Yeah, Something Max Power, he'll do. Or is he from New Zealand? No, that's the other one. No, that's the other one. No, the Australian something Power. It might be Alex Power. Yeah, or something. Will, Max, no, it's Will Power. Will Power. Will Power. Yes. <laughs> Max Power's from the Simpsons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, not that willpower is a, you know, it's still, they both sound made up. Oh, All of a sudden, having yeah. that guy playing piano there doesn't sound like such a bad decision. Why, when you're pulling in to retire, would you take off one of your helmet, like, little screen things? Like, you're retiring. Just, you, it's you don't the need weakest to be able to see for the, this next six yeah. minutes. Six, six, <laughs> you know, metres. There is a lot no, of you can I've seen your yeah. career. <laughs> oh man have you seen his hair when he started driving my goodness <laughs> um it's good to know that he's finally reached breaking point uh, 
That's mm. true. That's Roman Grosjean the, is the true do, though, villain right? of this show. Of the of Formula One. That's what I mean. There's the, the kind of scale look to the building, right? See how they overlap? Oh, right. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. Very good. I love that he sent AR out to go and find them, like he was the personal assistant. It's like... <sighs> it's weird that they got the audio but not the video of this like i mean maybe they were just mic'd up and they were like oh you can't come in here it's like oh, that's fine we can still hear everything bro <laughs> i mean no well, we can't i mean we definitely can or do they recreate this maybe hmm? reenactment or using like a google ai voice maker ah oh. ah oh, that's an interesting experiment deep fake this is really good this was an insight that um I mean, uh, I didn't know this happened on the day, but I actually had this spoil for me as well. Someone was like, oh, man. And I hadn't seen it. And they're like, oh, when he broke the door, incredible. I was like, what? Shut up. No, don't tell me. Yeah. Those are the things that I want to know about. <laughs> <laughs> Such a pissing match. Like, you know. <laughs> they do. They are... I mean, it's not good for their record. Like, would you go and hire Roman Grosjean now as a driver? Like, when you know uh, that... No. I mean, it's just... Uh, it's just. Why are a, we seeing this when they didn't show any of it in the episode? I don't... It's juxtaposition, Rob. Look at how good the other teams are. They win races. But here it is in to be setting Crisis. Crisis. Ooh. Yeah, you should do that. You should mm. do what he did. I would never jump into the over those barriers. I'd be so scared I hurt myself. <laughs> if that's your <laughs> bar. <laughs> you have a good team and you give them money and they come to work. I mean yeah. that's if that's not it's so such the, good blokes. You oh. could play poker with them, put your cards down and go to the bathroom and they wouldn't even look at the cards. Like oh. it's we just we've got all the ingredients for winning an F one championship are right there, but <sighs> we've got, you know, got cars, drivers, mechanics. What else do we need? Shoes. Why aren't we winning? We're turning up and we're trying really hard, isn't that enough? No, he doesn't want to be part of losing. No one does. When you're so, when you're writing the checks, though, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> We're back to swearing. Dare to swear, Zach. Mm, should we end it there? No spoilers. I think so. Um, you know, if you want to continue watching this, good luck to you. Uh, we're going to continue on with our little silly F one show. But hope you enjoyed that second commentary. Um, it was a bit less to get his teeth sucked into, so um, hopefully that one uh, went as well for you as it did for us. But, Zach, we still have a little bit of a job to do, by which I mean I'm going to be challenging you in this week's Super Quiz. We will accept a couple of questions. Should one only win one? Would one want to have won that one in round one? Can you repeat the question? Um, <laughs> one of my favourite quiz Types is always A or B. A or B. Is it a this thing or is it a that thing? And there's no F1 racing for us to pull a theme out of. And we've been watching Drive to Survive. So I was like, maybe Zach would appreciate something with a bit of a Drive to Survive flavor. And then I know you're a marketing person. So speaking of flavor, this week's quiz is called Eppies or Pepsis, where I'm going to say some words. You're going to tell me whether this is an episode title from season one of Drive to Survive, <laughs> or is it a marketing slogan used by the Pepsi Corporation from days gone by. How does that sound? I think this is outstanding. This is this is a classic rod quiz. <laughs> <laughs> it so is. Um, I've got, hang on, we should do the classic thing. How many have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's eleven questions, Whoa. but I mean, this will fly past because it's just a, what do you think of this? And you say it's an Epi or a Pepsi. So I'll give you the first one and you can say Epi or Pepsi. Any weather is Pepsi weather. What do you think, Zach? Is that an Epi or a Pepsi? That feels like a Pepsi. Boom, you're off your flying start. That is a Pepsi. The next one, all to play for. Is that an Epi or a Pepsi? That's an Epi. That's an Epi. That was, I think, the season opener for season one, Drive to mm. Survive. 
episode one. Next one, be young, have fun, Epi or Pepsi. <laughs> I think it's Pepsi, but I hope it's an Epi. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Pepsi. The next one, the next generation. Oh, I mean, that's Pepsi. That's the famous thing, right? Is that your answer? Yeah, I think so. The next generation. Or is it? Hmm. You could be tricking me on this one. Um, uh, I'm going to say it's ep- Epi then. <laughs> the next generation is an Epi. Your next question. Generation next. Is that an Epi or a Pepsi? Yes, that's the Pepsi. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, that is Pepsi. That's Pepsi. Very well oh, done. You'd never, right over that little, one. Oh. you'd never get in my little trick there, but they, uh, the tricks will continue. The next one, The Art of War. Epi or Pepsi? <laughs> Pepsi, The Art of War. I think it's Epi. <laughs> it's an Epi. Here is Sun Tzu's or... Art of War, brought to you by Pepsi. <laughs> Uh, Never totally enclose your opponents. Always let them have a way out so you can give them free Pepsi. (laughs) Always leave one who can run away and tell the others about the fantastic taste. taste. (laughs) Okay, the art of war. That was an epi. Um, All or nothing, epi or Pepsi? Uh, Epi. Epi. Dare for more, epi or Pepsi? Pepsi. Pepsi. Change the script, epi or Pepsi? Oh, shit. I feel like that's Epi. No, that one is Pepsi. Oh. Change the game. Epi oh. or Pepsi? Epi. That's also Pepsi. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> you double bluffed me. <laughs> I did. I double. I, I, I triple uh-huh. bluffed you. I, the little little middle bluff bluffed about Generation right X town. and Next Generation. You never get it that perfectly, but just, you know. It's like climbing stairs or something. The first few flights go very, very well. And after a little bit, it just it just like snowballs, but it's the opposite of snowball because you're going uphill. Anyway, got lost in my metaphor there, but you did um, you did, you did valiantly. And uh, I think you've got a big future in either writing episode descriptions or writing Pepsi slogans. And the good news is if you get both jobs at once, you can double charge because whatever words you come up with are interchangeable, more or less. Oh, that was a um, that was a quick that was a journey. quiz. Mm, I loved yeah. it. Well, I wanted it to be uh, a bit of a light fun, a little bit like a Pepsi. A bit of light fun. A bit of light fun. A bit of yeah. light fun. Apparently, they always win. The uh, Pepsi always wins the Pepsi versus Coke blind testing because Pepsi <laughs> has, is more flavoursome in the first mouthful, but a Coke is better enjoyed in the full serving size. Mm, I haven't heard that. Mm. Mm. How does RC Cola feature in those things? Oh, I, remember, I used to remember getting those in the little bottles and you take them into the football. <laughs> little RC collar bottles. Yeah, they're like they're like two hundred mils. You fit in a lunchbox. Oh, so cool. Anything miniaturized. Anything small. Like I really like you know like on airplanes when you get the tiny little cokes. I really like those. I want small things. The little um, half cans. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, when you, you know when you get like tonic cans for your like gin and tonics, but you don't get and you get the really little ones because they're just like one serving for with your gin. You know what I'm talking about. Mm. I did I did get a big gin order just recently, and then I also ordered from them hand sanitizer, which, confusingly, comes in a very similar-shaped bottle, so I do have to have my wits about me. Mm. Is there any F1? What are the F1-themed drinks? Like, what's what's the most F1 drink you can think of, other than, like... Champagne. Well, obviously, like, a, well, yeah, champagne, that's a very good one, or, a um, like, a, a, a Red Bull and, a, like, a, a yeah. Jager bomb, I suppose. That good to start um, as a bit of a Jager bomb. <laughs> someone's got a new nickname um i guess i mean there's probably a, like a, an official formula that the, the drivers drink during the race like some kind of isotonic thing oh yeah that they drink. maybe that's what the formula refers to we've been thinking it's been the engine <gasps> the whole time but it's actually You're what they're blowing the doors off it zach the formula one is the drink that's the it's not the sport at all mm. Mm. something oh. to think about and you love to see it um something well zach yeah i'm out of things to throw at you we've done the super quiz we've uh, done a commentary track and there's no signs about when F1 will be coming back. So, um, Well, I have a question for you. Do you think F1 mm-hmm. will be back before we finish this season of doing data swears? Um, topic came up today with some of my coworkers when I mentioned we were doing commentary tracks. And I kind of said, um, a bit selfishly, I kind of want to do the whole season of commentaries. So maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it all depends on how many of these we want to pump out. But that's, I think, you know, these are going so well. I think that we'll probably just, whenever we get the feeling like we want to talk to each other, pump out one of these, um, stick with us fans and, um, 
you know, we'll try and keep some kind of regularity going. But uh, until racing comes back, there's just not much else to talk about. So we may as well watch these uh, episodes and relive our past glory as a sport. Well, they're so fun. I forgot that we were doing a podcast until the episode ended. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> like the, the Drive to Survive <laughs> episode. Right. I was like, we're not just and you're like, ready for a super quiz? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That show we do. Um, <laughs> hopefully future episodes, though. I, I think doing commentary on just one team. I mean, it, they do their it's best tough. to turn it into gripping television, but from a commentary, commentary viewpoint, it's a bit it's a bit one note. So yeah, hopefully future ones uh, have a bit more for us to get our teeth sunk into. Mm. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe we should just wrap her up, buddy. Yeah, let's wrap her up, buddy. Every, everyone, stay safe, and I uh, hope you're not missing us or F1 too much. Um, and. Yeah, I don't know. So, give us your best tip for how to how to occupy yourself and kill time and improve yourself during all this. Okay. In all seriousness, put your phone down for like three hours and not listen to a podcast or anything, and try to find things that like you would actively choose to do, as opposed to like spring to mind whilst you're browsing social networking feeds or like looking yeah. at emails or whatever. Like, actually, put your phone down and be like. I know I can't do everything I want to do. Like, what I would actually want to do is go and get a burger from Meat Liquor down the road and have an icy cold beer along with it and some, like, really nice loaded fries. But, Mm -hmm. yes, I'm in my house, but I'm going to actively decide to go and play that video game for a couple of hours uninterrupted or go and, like, call my friends or my parents or play guitar or read a book or learn a language or whatever it is, but just, like, focus. Just try to put yourself in it. Even if that thing is not, like, self growth or anything like that even if it's just i'm gonna watch the new season of of brooklyn 99 like just just focus on that and don't do too many things at once and don't put too much pressure on yourself to like have your focus all over the place just pick one thing take a deep breath and enjoy it so if someone has no um timer in their house would you endorse them putting their phone in the microwave and sitting it for three hours and then coming Mm. back at the end of that yeah no no no. when it explodes you know that that's three hours Mm mm-hmm and if the problem was your phone the whole time, well, problem solved. No more phone. No more problem. <laughs> exactly. And, no, and the only other thing that bring, has been bringing me joy, the only other thing, not really, there's been lots of things, but um, cook something. Fuck around with it. Just scramble some eggs and throw some shit in there that you've never done before. Get really good at yes. making French omelettes. Just cook, cook some anything. bread. Look up yes, a recipe. They're bread. all online. It's not uh, hard. All you need to do is have a go. And if you have a go, you'll get a go, by which I mean you'll get some bread. If you um, want the simplest bread thing, I made bread, like white bread for the first time yesterday. Alex, mm-hmm. French guy cooking on YouTube, his most recent episode, he's at home and he's got this really simple bread recipe. It's water, milk, flour, like dry yeast, some sugar, some salt, knead it together, let it rest, knead it a bit more, let it rest, put it in the tin and bake it for half an hour. It was the simplest shit. It just takes time, <laughs> but it's so low stress and so nice put on the new strokes album in the background oh so <laughs> yes. good Ugh, what a day i haven't even listened to that album but yeah uh, i need to get around that um i like that that's a good tip i know that my brother has cooked a loaf of bread using a beer because beer's got yeast and mm. whatever in it so you mm. just add a couple of extra ingredients and a beer turn it into uh bread take something that might have cost seven dollars turn it into something that would have cost one dollar worth of ingredients but hey you've got that story and it's fantastic for the insta just do it all for the gram. You know what? That's if you were to wrap all of this up into one, one mm-hmm. um, a bit of advice. Stop doing it for the gram and do it for yourself <laughs> or someone you love. <laughs> so good. The advice that I would have is if uh, if anyone offers to uh, hook up on on some kind of Zoom thing, and if your immediate reaction is, "Oh, that might go either way. I don't know if I can be bothered." Just put in the effort. Just check okay. it out. Go and go and have a go because it will probably turn out to be really good. It's probably exactly what you need. Um, Well, Zach, I think that's incredible. I think we've done our job and then some for this week. Until next time, which I don't know when that's going to be, but it'll be whenever, um, let us know what you thought about this. And uh, as always, we're trying to keep this thing rolling. But for now, we're done. Until next time, my name's been Rodney. My name's been Zach. We'll see you on the other side of this gap between podcast episodes. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. That's it. It's exactly right. You know, I think 
the last time you did the oh yeah, you did wait the perfect amount of time that I didn't have to edit where <laughs> it came in the thing. Like, was, that's that's unsettling. I was like, oh, I guess I'll just, just leave that there, uh, shall I? <laughs> Done this too many. It turns out 162 episodes is one too many. Uh, 